And the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. So when you're worthy to receive, it's not going to be on Match.com when you're looking at body parts and whatever else. <laughs> this is going to be like ka-ching. An like, energy like, connection. Wow. Yeah. Like that came out of nowhere because <laughs> when you're in survival and you're in separation and you're in lack and you're forcing and controlling and trying to predict outcomes, you're matter trying to change matter. And of course, it's going to take time for this to happen because you're creating a three-dimensional reality and everything in three-dimensional reality takes time. Mm -hmm. But when you're creating from the heart, with a coherent brain and a coherent heart, and you got that 5G Wi-Fi signal, it's, it's not like you go anywhere now. <laughs> there, the experiences are coming to, you're drawing the event to you. So, mm. so we spend a lot of time bonding with our future emotionally. I have colleagues of mine who look at our, our data on oxytocin and they're like, uh, listen, oxytocin levels go up during, a, you know, when I'm, when I'm in, a, in a relationship, the honeymoon stage of a relationship and it, a monogamy is created because of those chemicals or uh, a female mammal is bonding with our offspring. That's exactly right. I want our people, our students to bond and fall in love with their future just like they do with somebody else. And when you're bonded to your future, no person, no circumstance, no thing is going to remove you from it. So then, if you fall from grace during the day, then the next question is, what person, what circumstance caused me to disconnect from my love in the future? Mm. And let me rehearse in my mind, if I have that same circumstance, how I'm going to overcome it. And now you're worthy of love. It's no longer the person or the event. It's just you're doing what it takes to stay in the emotion of your future. You're, your, your body is aligned emotionally to that future. So great doing it with a meditation. That's easy. But now the real game is open your eyes. <laughs> open your eyes. Happening. It's happening. Open, open your eyes and be in the initiation of life mm. and stay in that place and just yeah. know that your future is going to happen. So, so being able to activate the heart and breathe in there and get the body out of survival and start working with it like it feels safe enough to create. Once energy makes it here, you're going to get some really good ideas. Yeah. You're going to see things you never thought of seeing. You're going to feel things you never thought you'd feel. And the, the, the images that you're creating, what are they doing? The thoughts that you're creating, they're making more of those chemicals. And now you're feeling more of the, the feeling of your future before it happens. You're, you're giving your body a sampling, mm. a taste of the future before it's happened. Keep doing that enough times and that feeling is going to become very familiar to you. Um, there was a, a researcher uh, out of Yale University that uh, in the 1940s that was studying electromagnetic fields around living organisms. And in the 1940s in Yale, at Yale University, nobody was doing this. And he was a, a vitalist. He wanted to understand the unseen fields around living organisms. So he started studying eggs, all kinds of eggs. Chicken eggs, you know, swallow eggs, reptile eggs, snake eggs, salamander eggs, there's all kinds of eggs. And he was using a magnetometer and what he found was what 100% of the time, no matter what egg he measured, the positive charge was always at the head mm -hmm. and the negative charge was always at the tail. Well, if you have positive charge on one end and negative charge on the other end, you've got an external electromagnetic field called the magnetic field. That's a magnet, right? What happens with human beings is every thought has a frequency. Every thought produces a chemical. So if you keep obsessing about your lack, your lack of finances, your lack of time, your lack of energy, lack, 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 and, and those thoughts... I don't have this, I, I don't need know. this, What, I what are this. the chemicals you're feeding your body? You're taking thought, it's producing a frequency, and that frequency in the form of chemistry is storing that thought emotionally right in your second center. You feel guilty, you feel unhappy. The moment you feel unhappy, then you generate more thoughts equal to that feeling, which makes more chemicals, and you keep taking energy from the brain and storing it in the body. If you react to people in your life and you feel anger, frustration, whether it's traffic, the news, whatever it is. Parents, you, parents, whatever, boy, girl, yeah. you're drawing from this field, this electromagnetic field, you're tapping that resource and you're making chemistry out of it and the field shrinks. So now, mm. by doing that and living in survival, the body no longer is a magnet. So now you have very little energy in the brain. In fact, 5% of the energy is in the brain and 95% is stored in the body. Now the body's been conditioned emotionally. So a lot of energy in the body. 
very little in the brain. Mm. So in our work, we want energy to be in the brain. We want to move energy back up to the brain. So what does that do when we move the energy from the body to the brain or the heart? Well, this is a great thing because once it makes it here, it's going up, um. right? So we do these different meditations and these different techniques to draw that energy right up to the top of the head. Now, when this energy shakes loose and it starts to move, the sympathetic nervous system switches on. And instead of releasing energy out, like you're being chased by a predator or you're, you're having an orgasm, that same energy is going up into the brain and the brain switches on and it goes into these very high, high frequencies called gamma brainwave patterns. Now the person has an arousal, but the arousal isn't fear. Not an orgasm. Well, in the brain. An, an, an orgasm of the mind. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's energy that's being that released into the brain. Mm. And you can only describe it as ecstasy or bliss. So the energy of guilt that was stored from thinking and feeling in the same way releases and it travels up to the brain and it's going back. And when it reaches the brain, what happens? You get more energy in the brain and it begins to produce that external field. So you're, you're beginning to create a field around your body. You can imagine the future as opposed to staying in something from the past. Well, the once the energy is moved, you're, you're, you're going to feel, you're going to feel pretty blessed in that moment. In fact, so we can transfer guilt, shame, insecurities can, into bliss. Oh my God. Yeah. We do it all the time. Momentarily. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. We do it all the time. And the, the amazing thing is that that rush of energy that's moving into the brain is changing the brain's physiology and producing that field. Now you have energy to heal. Mm. Now the body is a magnet again. And it's as the energy moves up the spinal cord and it starts passing through those spinal nerves and there's a lot of dynamics going on on the body, that energy that was once stored in, in that one of those energy centers that's released is energy to heal, energy to create a new future. You're replenishing your field and now the body becomes more of a magnet instead of an inert piece of metal with no charge, right? So the person then who's reacting to whatever person or circumstance in their life, the stronger the emotion that they feel towards politics, towards the traffic, towards their girlfriend, Social towards their media, ex, whatever. whatever, the more they're paying attention to it. But where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So we also know that when... It's hard to create from a place of putting attention towards negative energy. Well, you're not creating. What you're doing is you're tying up your vital life force. Mm. You're giving your power away to that person or that circumstance that you could be using to create a new life with. So when a person's sitting in their meditation, and I love doing this, we just had an event in Marco Island. I'm gonna take people further than where they normally go. I know they're gonna go, oh, well, I'm done with my meditation. No, you're not done. We're gonna take you to that point where that feeling is so in your face and you can't turn on your cell phone you can't get up and walk away because a thousand people are not getting up and walking away and you're part of the community. You're sitting in the fire and you have one of two choices. You can let that brain run on, on programs and hardwired mm -hmm. patterns and you, the arousal will drive your brain further out of balance or you'll practice the formula. And as you lower the volume to that emotion, you're going to take your attention off that person or problem. Guess what? Here comes energy back to you. You're taking your power back. And now you're building your field that way. And when that happens, energy starts to move up into the heart. Once mm -hmm. it makes it to the heart, it's going to the brain. So we start seeing people there. They, their hearts naturally open up. And all the things they thought they wanted when they came to the event, they no longer want because they feel like they have it. They don't need it anymore. Because they feel like they, they, they've got the feeling before the experience. So that they feel so whole that they no longer want. And, and they're not looking for their future anymore. You only look for it when you feel lack. Mm. When your body is conditioned emotionally into the future, why would you look for it when it feels like it's already happened? Now, this is where it gets weird. Because now <laughs> things start coming to you and you're no longer in need. And hey, when it comes to you, you go, oh, here. Take it. I don't want it. I just thought, I just wanted to know that I could create. And people create a lot of wealth in our events. Yeah. And the first thing a lot of people do is they say, "I'm buying a cruise for you. I'm buying you your car. Oh, mom, I'm getting you that house." Why do they do that? Because they're so excited. <laughs> they feel so amazing, and they're thinking, "I could do this again." Why would a, a person in lack wouldn't give? A person who's abundant would give because they know how to create. So mm. now the game changes. It's no longer about the self. Mm. And you, you're, you're doing it because that you know that you can create it. So 
So then maintaining that state, when you're in love, yes. when you're in love, in love, in it, in your in, body. You are in love. Not in another relationship. No, you're not looking for it. You're, you're in it. not looking for it. You would be in lack. When oh. you're in love, there's nothing to do. You're in love. You're 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 the magnet. You you are it. And so you that, are love. Yeah, so the events that come into your life would not only be just a reflection of a relationship with someone that you wanted to be intimate with. You would have meaningful, loving relationships mm. that would enhance that feeling. And when it didn't, you would say, "Ooh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if this is right for me." You would you would trust that because you worked really hard mm -hmm. to nurture this, to protect it, to grow it, uh, to to trust it again, to open up. Right? It takes a lot to do this. But we see men in our work. I was on them this week. I I never let up on those guys. Mm. Big. Macho guys, you want to be, you, you want to know what courage is? Let's go. Let's open that heart. And when they start cracking open, I mean, we see people heal from from colon cancer and from angina, and all, just boom, there it is. There it's not. That's what that's what's been stored all down here. Once they open this up and it moves, the body is transforming in that moment. Mm -hmm. It's the the system is informing itself. Information is being restored back into the body. So. When you get to that point where you, you, when you're in lack and separation, time gets really crazy because mm. you want stuff to happen faster and it feels like it's taking forever. That's because you're in separation. When you're in love and you're in connected, you don't want the moment to end. I mean, I had four, three guys over for dinner last night, all these academics. I cooked a meal and a half for these guys, took out great wine. Why? I wanted them to be so caught up in the moment mm. that they forgot that we made a new memory. We made a we had a great experience, and life then is about experiencing it yeah. in love. Like I'm not going to be guilty of what I'm what I'm eating or judge what I'm eating if I've cooked a great meal. Let's eat because the guilt is worse mm. than whatever it is you think is bad for you. So then, when you're feeling those elevated emotions and you're locked in love, then then. You see life through the lens of love, and there's compassion. Like yeah. you could look at your greatest adversary, the person that threw you under the bus, mm. and you've overcome yourself, and you've done the work. They've stolen from you. They're trying you to talk bad about you behind your back. Trashing They've... on you, all that stuff. You'll look at them, and you'll see a part of yourself that you used to be that you no longer are, and you have nothing but understanding and compassion. Wow! For like, wow! I just I feel for that person. They're they're hurting. They're struggling. I used to be like that, but you're no longer that. When you're that, then they push your buttons. When you're not, <laughs> you're reactive to that because you're equal. But you're, when you've overcome it, why would you do that? You would see them as somebody struggling, just like you see a child who's throwing a tantrum, just like other. Oh, I react. Here. Oh my God, I react every day. But the fundamental question is, how long are right, you going to react? Right, right. So shortening the refractory period of your emotional reactions. Is that kind of intelligence where we're keeping ourselves out of the past, mm -hmm. justified, valid or not? The only person that that's affecting is you. <laughs> and then you have to ask yourself: Is it loving to me? Well, if you can't control that emotional reaction, then you're a junkie, and you're on a bad trip, and you're overdosing. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you're overdosing, you got to get beyond your rational mind because you'll say, "Why are you this way?" Oh, because I. All right. By you doing that, is it making more of those chemicals? Yeah. Why were you doing that to make you feel more like it's it's justified? Mm. So then, this takes. Well, I, I excuse myself many times in one day because you'll be. I'm in reaction mode. I'm like, Let me step I'm like, aside. Are you like? I'll be like, Are you kidding me? What? Who? What did they do? And then I'll be like, Oh, we're not going to make a decision in this, in this state. state. So give me a minute. Oh wow. I go. Take a few breaths. Get out of that state. Remember my future, where I'm going. It's so much more important than the present moment. I just got to condition my body into that future. And now it takes sometimes a Herculean effort. I have to tell you. You, <laughs> can, you, you can ask my staff. I'll be in my. I'll be in there 15, 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll say I work. It took me an hour. But to get, to get what, back to a peaceful in the, state. In the, in, the, in, in, the, in the expanse of all eternity, if I don't overcome that emotion. Then I'm in my past, and that's karma because that emotion's gonna 
drive my behaviors and thoughts and I'm going to be predictable. My past yeah. is going to look, my future is going to look a lot like my past. So if I'm soulfully on the journey, mm. then what matters the most is being able to learn the skill of mm. self-regulation. So in our, in our events, when we see people that can do brain and heart coherence, they know the formula. Well, I look at their brain scans and I'm like, Lewis, great brain. Hey, you got, you can, I, I see you can hold that heart coherence for 45 minutes. Great, now let's put you on a pole at 55 feet in the air. <laughs> let's get a heart rate monitor on you and let's see what you're gonna do up there. Mm. Do you wanna be able to self-regulate there? Because if you can there, it's not like I'm trying to give you an adrenaline rush. Actually, I'm trying to do the opposite. I want you to settle your brain and body back down, go against thousands of years of programming like fear and teach your body in that moment how to regulate. I guarantee mm. you, if you go a little further than what you did and you stay conscious, instead of throwing in a program and rushing through it and trying to get it over with, you start breathing, you start getting back in your heart, you start getting centered, you work against those chemicals, I guarantee you when you walk into your life, you're going to, the moment you see something doing, you're going to catch on right away. You're going to catch yourself. Now that, that saves you a lot of energy and a lot of time, because if you're able to change it then, instead of four hours later, where you're just yeah. gone. Or you've already reacted. Yeah. And, 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 and you've, you've done things you said, I, you say, I should have never done that. I should yeah. have never said that. That's what those emotions do because those emotions make us really primitive. I will tell you this, that one of the things that happens in, you know, when people start to come across information and knowledge that's really valuable, and they want to share it with the person next to them or share it with their lover, yeah. whatever. But if they're in a relationship for 15 years and they have a lot of emotional agreements yes. with people and things and they're in a lot of habits, we, we, we only uh, accept, believe, and surrender to information that's equal to our emotional state. So sometimes it bounces off the person, and if the person's really enthusiastic, then, the, then they're really like, whoa, what oh, is up down. with you? are yeah. changing in front of me. I don't like you this way. Like, we, we had a thing going here. We could pick apart anybody or oh. anything. Now you're not showing up equal to my memory. You're unpredictable. You're in the unknown. I'm you're unsafe. Five. Yeah, you're the, the unknown is unsafe, right? So a lot of times mm. the enthusiasm is the first thing that starts creating disconnection. But if the person goes, that's amazing, that's really cool, say it again. Like they're ready to hear the information. Those people are gonna to evolve together, mm -hmm. right? If the person just kind of looks and says, oh my God, my wife's on the Kool-Aid or whatever it is, <laughs> this person is, you know, they, they changed their medication, I don't know what's happening with them. Then that person that is trying to explain it philosophically, is just looking for someone to exchange information with. That person may not be the person. He may just like Sunday, Sunday football games and Monday night football and hanging out and drinking beer, and they fell in love when they were the same, mm -hmm. right? So now, the next step is to find the person that you can exchange that information with because you wanna understand it better so you can begin to use it. Now, mm. you have to stop preaching to that person. That's the first thing you have to do. In other words, show up happy. Show up transformed. Be the example. And then one of two things will happen. I tell my kids this all the time. If you're happy, then that person is going to want to get some of that. And they're going to ask you, all right, so what the, what, what the hell are you doing? Like, all of a sudden, you're like happy. They're either going to go, I want some of that, and they're going to evolve together. Now, if they're... If they don't, and then you come down here and compromise yourself to meet them on that level, they're going to take some of your energy and you're going to be like, who am I? Resentful, I just, angry, yeah, all these things. You didn't, you didn't respond the way I wanted to. Now we're angry and we're back down here, right? Mm -hmm. But if you stay happy and they come up and they meet you there, then you're still happy. If you don't come down and you stay happy and they stay there and they move away, guess what? Stay happy. You're still happy. Yeah. Is this so, so then people in relationships will compromise themselves out of, out of obligation, out of necessity, out of obedience, mm. out of programs. And at the end of the relationship, they don't even remember who they are because they compromised who, oh, so many aspects of themselves. So. They, were changing, they were changing in a way that kept the relationship safe. Why do so many relationships do this in general? Because nobody they... wants to tell the truth. If you mm. sat down and said, let's get vulnerable, let's sit down, let's open our hearts, I have a bottle of wine, let's just, let's get vulnerable. Hey, I'm a, I'm this. How are you doing? Like, what's really going on in there? Are you happy? 
And then be, be an adult. Like, you're mm-hmm. unhappy, I'm unhappy too. You want to try to stick this out? All right, well, if I were to say, if I could get in my heart and I was looking at myself, these are the things that make me unhappy that I want with me and that I want to change. It's not only you, it's me, what I want to change. And the other person said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stuck too. I don't know how to change. I'm, you know, I'm doing this. I'm drinking more or whatever. I, mm-hmm. I got to stop. And, and, and it, it's important enough for me. This relationship is important enough it for matters. me that I'm willing yeah. to make the change and let's figure out how to do it together. That, that to me. Or I've done this. Hey, are we, I can't feel it anymore. I, I can't feel that feeling anymore. I think, I think it's time to move on. I love you, but it's turned, I've changed and I still love you, but I got to go. I mean, it's just different. We don't have the same yeah. interests anymore. We've grown in different directions, and and out of respect, let's let's do that together, yeah. right? So, so those relationships still stay fertile. They're still wonderful. They're still you keep them alive, but they've transformed into mm-hmm. something else. It's the not telling the truth about how you really feel because it would make you vulnerable, and that may means someone one ups you, or you may get rejected in some way.